dark and crispy evening at 4.20 a.m. A vandal lives the streets. Who is he? How high is he? The world may never know. Is it a rat? Is it a fox? No, it's a fairly used mascot, a raccoon named Sly Cooper. What an interesting take on a mascot. You know, it's really interesting at this time, the collectathon kind of games like this that really push their mascots. Now we have a thief protecting his family heirloom, the Thievius Raccoonus, from five bosses who have stolen the pages away from him. Now, you'd think he'd be, you know, a murderous thief and uh, kind of like an anti-hero, but he's, he's really humorous, and you do, you do get to be on his side quite a bit, obviously, as you play as him. But what I really like about this game is the intros and the, and the cartoony graphical style. It really reminds me of, you know, Cartoon Network and how that used to be. Look at this, Sly Cooper in Sunset Snake Eyes. I love the variety of level design here. You got the desert, you got a uh, casino, we have the jungle, voodoo jungle, and then we have the mountains in China. I mean, there's just a, like a nice variety of levels. Of course, there's always a lot of those kind of distinctions in these kinds of games. How it's really set up, though, with the map is that you go to one of these places that's he held by one of the bosses, such as Kung Fu Panda here. And you sneak in, and then you get access to the inner layer, which is where you need at least five keys to get in through to get to the boss. Just like any other game this era, kind of like Banjo-Kazooie, you pick up collectibles along the way in each level, and at the end of the level, you get a key that leads you closer to the end. What this means is you have to get... The key, every single key just to move forward, though. Which, if you get stuck in any area in this game, you're kind of going to be screwed. So you do have to be careful. Luckily, it is not that difficult of a game, though. The platforming is pretty set in stone and does not really fall off too bad. But at least we have a fun story to follow. So now that we've figured out why we should care about a raccoon and his backstory, let's get into the gameplay a little bit. It is definitely important to know whether or not this game is worth it for 2022. It's hard to it's, it's hard to actually determine what the best course of action is towards these older games, but that's why I'm here, trying to figure this out. Damn you, Sly Koopa! <laughs> Since we have a humorous protagonist, that's helpful, absolutely, for sure. We definitely want to have somebody that we're playing with that's exciting and entertaining, which I would say that he very much is. He's a sarcastic character. The gameplay itself, though, you know, it's a typical PS2 era kind of a collectathon game. We have the camera angle, which is not the best, and we have platforming, which actually is fantastic in this game. I couldn't believe what I was seeing with the ability to be able to drop down and go around pedestals so easily. It was very simple, but something that I realized was meant for the sneaking around mechanic really helps super well. It's very fun to do so, but what does interrupt it is this annoying turtle. I don't know why he's with me or why they chose a turtle, but I have to say he interrupts and makes it worse every single time. Not like Slippy and Fox and Star Fox, of course. Hitting enemies is very familiar to me. It seems exactly like it was for Crash Bandicoot. Uh, big, huge enemies that just go down in one hit. That's the formula, right? But in this game, you have the sneaking, right? As you can see here, the typical chill in a barrel and walk by mechanic always works. But then you have the, ooh, the glowing yellow light. That will get you caught. And yes, it does hurt when you get hit. These guys come after you strong when you get hit in the light. Boom! He got slimed. We're still like feeding off of that like late 90s uh, slime time live on Nickelodeon kind of mentality here. Here's a turtle again. Now, really, ugh, he's super annoying for a couple reasons. One, tutorials that you would assume yourself based on platforming are pretty obvious. It's one of those games that says, press circle to do this, and then you have to do it. It's like, okay, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. But really, 
what the game is about is finding the Thievius Raccoonus pages, such as these. You have to do this by breaking those glass bottles, this, the exact number in each level. Again, kind of like in Crash Bandicoot with the boxes. You hit all of them, and you can open the case. So this one gives you a brand new move, which is a roll. Definitely helpful. The only problem is some of these levels, you really don't want to go hitting every single one of these glass things. It's kind of annoying just to keep hitting them over and over again. And sometimes I just go through the level and I'm like, I really don't want to. Other times they're kind of just on the way already like this. And boom, you got 20. You're in. And here we go again. I need Mr. Toad to tell me every single thing. Upon diminutive points, leapeth lively and presseth the triggering device with the round oh geometrical Lord. object emblazoned upon it. So jump and hit the circle button to land on narrow spots. <laughs> as long as the game is self-aware like that, I do gotta appreciate it. This game was done by Sucker Punch Studios, which is interesting because they have put in so much effort into their games as of late. I can't believe that they started from here. But the same could be said for Naughty Dog in Crash. But like I said, the platforming is very precise in this game. There's a button that you can press to, to land exactly on things that you need to in the wired areas. And then you get to really just knock out these enemies so easily, just like in Spyro. If you remember, those big enemies just go down in one hit, no problem. Sly is very slick, and I do enjoy running around with him. I don't feel like I'm ever cheated when I'm platforming and I die, or get close to dying. He is very much on top of his toes. Uh, the one thing that hurts this kind of game series is obviously the camera angle, which you can't really control much of. But that's, that's nor here or there. If this game was remastered, which I feel like in the future they will likely do so, uh, it should, you know, attempt to fix at least the camera angles and just give it a nice, a nice HD polish. Other than that, though, this game is really fun to go through. It's It's got a clear distinction of, okay, you go to this area and then the next one, and you go through. Sometimes you get hit, sometimes you get knocked down and die, but luckily there's unlimited continues, even though it says you have a certain amount of them. But then there's levels like this where you realize you got to the end and uh-oh, I don't have any more of the bottles. I only have two more left to get and then I can get the, the safe. So you have to come up with a decision and realize that is it really worth it just for one bottle? And most of the time I come to the conclusion of a little bit of anxiety first because I think I could find it in the area that I just was in and then realizing that it's not essential to the gameplay. So it is an upgrade system. You do get new moves when you do find these, but none of them are really that essential to continuing through the game. So what I would suggest is just play the game all the way through. Just go through on your own. If you are a collectathon kind of a person, it would be fun just to get everything. There's not really that many other things to get besides the keys and those bottles. Something that has to be mentioned is that the music in this game is pretty sweet. Let's take a listen. some smooth ass bass lines really feeling that but yeah this is a one of those levels that's the casino area it's kind of like the southerner uh dog house uh big dogs area big dogs casino the boneyard this is one of those situations where you know sometimes you do get the bottle exactly when you get to the end right where the safe is which is nice, and sometimes Mr. Turtle is just going to fuck with you and give you the wrong number in the beginning. I'll give you, you need an IQ of 140 to dial in 456. You know what? I don't need any of your bullshit. Just give me the number. Other times, you'll get these kind of upgrades, which don't really matter. I'll give you a map to find the rest of the clues. Again, it's just for those people who are all about the collectathons. Now, Something I really want to talk about in this game, which you probably aren't aware of, is the bonus levels. But they're not really bonus levels. They are just levels that you have to beat. 
this is one of those ones where it's way different than the rest of the gameplay. The platforming is not present there. It's more like there's a bunch of races or you're using a turret to save something. Kind of throws a wrench into the gameplay, to be honest with you. And the reason I'm saying this is because it usually makes you learn something that is not what you're used to doing. And then, unlike other games which give you a pretty easy way to beat it, this one is just ramped up to 10. Okay, so watch how fast these dudes get ahead of me. You're supposed to get the boost for this, right? And already they're starting way far ahead of you. So this is one of those areas that is just going to force you to repeat as many times as possible until you get it right. And these kind of mechanics in these older games for like PS2 era drive me up a fucking wall. This happens in N64 games as well. Uh, Mario Party type of stuff where you're twirling the, the stick on your hand way too fast and you just can't do it. And it's just forcing you to do it until you can. My huge advice for this would be to collect all of the boosts before you use them. What I mean by that is stockpile every single one of them as much as you can. Like you can see here, I got five saved up and you use as many as possible. That way you go really fast and you might be able to get ahead of these people, but it's really, really tough to get in front of them. You basically have to cut them off and then get lucky to not get bounced out of the way. Luckily I did okay in this one and was just able to scrape by this dude. Um, but I had tr tried this probably 50 times in a row, and I was so livid. Like, honestly, by this point, when I actually won, I felt like not even just a sense of relief, but just no more anger, which is never good in a game. You don't want to have to feel that way. Don't even get me started with this one. Now, the shooting area, you have to protect big uh, freaking hippo Barney over here, and... Uh, you can hit him so easily. I had to try so hard to not hit him. Now there's these monkeys with nunchucks and they're basically trying to smack him in the ass. And this guy, you could hit him. I could have easily hit him right there, but you need to not hit him. And he needs to literally, you need to knock out every other single enemy that comes at him. And they come at him fast, as you can see, really fast. And the camera is so zoomed in for some reason, you can't even see. I mean, this, it, you know, it would be fine if you didn't need the key and this was a bonus level, but the fact is you need this key to get to the boss. You cannot get to the boss unless you completed this. So say you went through the whole level, right? You beat all the platforming stages, no problem. And then you got to this shit and you just keep hitting foreground objects like that and just getting fucked. You're never going to get the, to the boss. Absolutely awful. Anyway, I did get through that luckily after 50 tries, but here we go. Here's one of the bosses kind of stupid. You're just jumping around on a bunch of things and hit them in the face with some sunlight they're all a little bit different, though, which I appreciated. There's, there's a good amount of variety in the bosses. This one, the crocodile lady was, you know, the Simon Says. Yeah, awesome. Like, sounds fun, right? But um, the only problem with this is if you get hit once, you are done. And it would, again, it would be fine, except she does this shit three times. Like, full, like, you're going forward into her three different times. And this is me on the third try here. And it gets fucking insane. Just look at this. Holy fucking shit, dude. And you, you can't, it's not like you just hit the button. It's you have to hit it at the precise moment or you're fucked. <sighs> Thank God fucking Kung Fu Panda was not that hard, though, because that made me well more relieved that I had to just fight somebody normally. I mean, I do appreciate the variety. It's nice that every boss is different. You got to have that in games like this. Um, but honestly, that crocodile lady was a nut. Anyway. 
back to the graphical thing. I really, really enjoyed all the graphics and how it looks. Hot Latin Spitfire takes out Kung Fu Panda. That was a very weird uh, newspaper article. Very strange. Uh, obviously, this is a little bit old school. Uh, but yeah, overall, like the presentation of this game, just last thoughts of this. I think it is really fun to play. I mean, there's some really interesting interactions here. You can see just explosions left and right. You got, you know, running on rings and snow levels and all the stuff that you want in this kind of game. You do have different moves like the slow down jump. That's pretty cool. And uh, other times you kind of just feel like you get screwed um, if you're messing around. Like here, you know, there's some glitchy stuff that happens because it's an older game, of course. But that's stuff that you can just deal with. Because you literally can do it as many times as you want, you don't get too frustrated. Some of the areas are kind of weird and you do get caught up. But other ones are just really pretty and just have a vibe to them that, you know, sucks you in. You're in the level for a while. And this is what I like about these old games. You stay in a, a level for so long that you really encompass the scenery so well. And you just get involved with it. And this is the Mississippi Bayou level. And um, this was the worst mini game for sure, but I still enjoyed it. It's just nice to have like an area that you get to explore, the outside area and the internal levels, just like Spyro. They used almost every prototype of these kind of games and put it into one, and I really enjoyed it. And then you have super funny moments just thrown in. I think this game is well deserved to be played. And if you haven't yet, I think it's worth going back to. Really cheap on the PS2 if you get a physical copy, but it's super fun. This is one of those games that was in Blockbuster when I used to go there as a kid and get one video game a week for a rental. I never chose it as a kid, and I'm kind of regretful of it, to be honest. If I had played this as a kid, I probably would have given this an ultra crispy rating. But as it is right now, it just impressed me as an adult, so that's got to be good for something, right? Not something to go back to all the time, but it is fried, and you know, you do go get fried food whenever you're feeling the hunger for it. So this game gets a fried ranking from me, and is an absolute beauty. I was well surprised that I gave I'm happy that my younger self gave me a chance to play it as an adult, and I suggest you do too. And here's to another raccoon video game character. It's like Hooper, you dog. Hey, I know, I know what you're saying, but the, the platforming could have been so much better. Oh, hey, how you doing? Didn't see you guys there. Mr. Crispy here. Just want to take a quick second to go over the ranking system in our videos. Now we got Crisp, of course, which is... Mwah, Perfect texture, that's what we're looking for. Right, now we got fried, which is very good, delicious, and it makes you want to come back for more. Not absolutely perfect though. We have broiled, which is kind of weird, right? A little bit of weird taste to it. It's, it's good though, very good. And then we have charred, which is dark and rough around the edges. And there's something, it could have been better. There, a little more effort could have been put into it. And then we have burnt, of course, which is just pure unedible. Now, we wanted to give a quick guideline to this because we know that our gaming appetites are all over the place these days, especially with retro games. We'd love to break it down for you, and it's a lot of fun for us to do so. We'd love to show you a little bit more videos, so stay tuned to our channel. Please like and subscribe. We'll hit you guys with some more videos, retro reviews, movies, shenanigans with Buzz and I. We're really excited to share some more content with you guys. As always, thanks a lot for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next time. And don't forget, in the meantime, keep it crispy. Right?